Hello, it's Miguel Sampas. What Miguel's my name is Taffrey16. Welcome back to another reaction video, and welcome my first reaction to Chris Morse's Jam. So, this is something that's been requested to me for a while, a lot more so recently since I did uh, Knowing Me, Knowing You out with Al Partridge for the first time, uh, and also another episode of the day today, and we're doing it today. Uh, so, Jam is an experimental black comedy sketch show which was created, written, and directed by Chris Morris. Broadcast on Channel 4, six episodes within a month from March to April of 2000. It is based off Blue Jam, which was a radio show on the BBC. Uh, Mark Heap was in this as well, as was Kevin Eldon, Julia Davis, uh, Amelia Bulmore, David Kahn as well. Uh, I believe, did he do this after Brass Eye? I think, so. no, no, during during Brass Eye. Brass Eye technically went from 97 to 2001. Well, actually, no, the 2001 thing was a special. So, technically after Brass Eye. I'm sorry, Brass Eye only went with 90, during 97 if it had a special in 91. So, or in 2001. So, technically after Brass Eye. I've been told, all I've been told is that this is pretty wild and pretty unlike anything I've ever seen before. Uh, luckily for us, apparently we can put this on YouTube. So we're going to watch the first episode. Uh, it's about 24 minutes, so let's see what's up. I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty excited for this. Again, it's been talked up to me a lot for a very long time, so let's see what we're in for. When dancing lost in techno trance arms flailing gawky bears then find you snagged on frowns and slowly dawns you're jazzing to the bleak tone of a life support machine that marks the steady fading of your day old baby daughter and when midnight sirens lead to blue flash road mash, stretchers, covered heads, and slippy red macadam, and find you creeping beneath the blankets to snuggle close a mangle bird, hoping soon you too be freezer drawed. I am a minute in. Therapy wig, welcome in jam. 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 Oh my fucking god. I don't have a clue what I'm in for. It's about Ryan. Oh. He's in trouble, is he? Well, he isn't. It's more... Martin. Oh, no, not Martin. Martin? I've got into a bit of a mess, Max. What'd you do? Mess. And we felt because you're Ryan's godfather. You could help. Right. I'll take my place for a bit. Take your place? You see, Ryan met this guy, Dave, at the pub. We had pretty strong suspicions about Dave. He's a bit, uh, you know. I don't know, no. And we really didn't want Ryan going that way. Is he gay? No. <laughs> so, uh, I went to the pub and met Dave to take his mind off Orion. So you fucked him? Mm-hmm. Um, and 
ended up having to Yeah. Bend over for him. <laughs> I knew it. Bend over. In bed. Bend over in bed. <laughs> Keep him away from Ryan. Oh. It's been going on for six months now. What the fuck? More than three times a day at weekends. Jesus. I need a break, Max. <laughs> if you could take over for me, yeah. just for a couple of weeks. If you drink your anus. quite a lot, it's not so bad. And he gives you this sniffing stuff. Makes it easier. <laughs> well, I really don't know. <laughs> I've been doing my bit too, Max. You? Making sure about Ryan and ladies. Anne's been going to bed with Ryan, disguised as a younger lady. <laughs> He doesn't know it's me. I wear a crop top and we meet in the dark. He thinks I'm a prostitute. You basically are. Oh. Only I know it's me. Can you help, Max? Can you? Uh, uh, well, I guess. Upstairs, I'll, I'll show you some of the things he does. Oh. Dear Lord. The day Kilroy lost his Uh... What the fuck? I did not need to see that man's penis. Thank you, nurse. I'm sorry, there's no easy way to say this, but your condition really is very serious. You won't have realized this at the moment, but you're in a coma. Coma? Yes. I first diagnosed symptomless coma three years ago, and since then, the number of cases has been steadily increasing. Really? Very characteristic of the early stages. Obviously, parents in particular have a lot of difficulty coming to terms with symptomless coma. I think that might to get out, Mum. You want love? I might get out, Mum. He's asking us to leave him alone. They get very tired. And they want to get out. 
Uh, no, he wants us to go, Mr. Pesper. Dad? Oh, yes, son. Um, I think we'd better go before he gets upset. Well, couldn't we just... I'm afraid he's likely to become a fool to himself, Mr. Pesper. Oh. What the fuck? Well, we'll best go. Well, take care. Bye-bye, mm -hmm. love. Bye. -bye. Bye. See you soon. Yeah. 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 Oh. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Uh, uh, nurse, uh, could you double the benzodiazepine, please? Oh, my oh. God. To watch a patient in a state of unavoidable decline <laughs> runs against every instinct I have. <laughs> when the dreadful day comes, I try and make things as easy as possible for the family. Even then, their hopes can be very unrealistic. Oh, oh, did he feel that? No, he didn't. I'm afraid it was just a reaction. But he moved. I'm sure he felt something, didn't he? If he felt anything, I'm afraid it would only have been excruciating pain. Sadly, there's no likelihood of a cure in the foreseeable future. I hope that one day there will be a cure. But until that day, many more young people are going to die. And I'll have to do this job again and again and again. yesterday I picked my car up for a garage. Geezer says, over there mate, keys in the ignition. And I look, I cannot bloody believe it. I'm guessing this is on purpose. The car is only four foot long. I said, I said, what's this? He goes, it's your car. I said, what do you mean it's my fucking car? He said, oh, that was what it was like when you drove it in here. And I said, don't fuck me about. How did I drive that in? It's only two foot six tall. He goes, you must have put on some weight. I thought I was going fucking mad. Then the manager comes out, he said, what the fuck's going on here? I said, I paid good money for this. He goes, what's wrong with it? I said, what do you mean, what's fucking wrong with it? I said, look at the size of it. He goes, what? I said, it's uh, only about four fucking foot long. What the fuck have you done to it? Then he says, oh, well, that's how it came in. He goes, I particularly remember that one, so I used to have one myself. A fucking four foot Vauxhall cart, and oh fucking yes. And I said, is that it then? I said, is that what I have to drive away? And they said, it's your car, take it or leave it, it's up to you. So I, I just had to fucking squeeze into it, didn't I? Fucking knees round me ears. <laughs> and this four fucking foot car is only two foot six tall. I mean, what am I, fucking noddy? <laughs> <laughs> fucking noddy! Leave Noddy out of this. I realised shortly after my 46th birthday that I wasn't going to get a wife. And oh. um, I'd messed up a couple of chances earlier on in my life. <clears throat> so I decided um, I'd marry myself. I'd do it alone. Oh. He has declared his marriage by the joining of hands and by the giving and receiving of a ring. I therefore proclaim him husband. It was it was really lovely. It was it was very nice. It was, uh, hey. Memorable. Sometimes uh, I meet a, um, a woman or a, a young girl I I find I get along with well, or I might meet and go out sometimes, or meet them at work. You just a young girl. And sometimes I think. Back up the bus. Oh, I, I could have married her. But um, I'm, I'm really very happy. Good for you, buddy. 
I'm not joining you, that's right. God, it's a duck. It's a niche business. We specialize in uh, providing thick people for jobs that they're particularly good at. Oh, um, thick as in? Arguments. I got you. Thick people are very good at winning arguments because <laughs> they're too thick to realize that they've lost. Come to pick up a lot Right. Rowena's uh, particularly thick. She's one of our top earners. She's very good with officials. She fails to grasp anything, least of all that she's being thick. So it's not your car then, Lennon? No, I'm picking it up for Mr Hunter. I'm not Mr Hunter. OK. Fill that form in for me, and that'll be £165, please. It's worth more than that. It's worth about £12,000. No, £165 is the fine you have to pay. <sighs> Don't see why I should pay £165 when Mr Hunter's already paid £12,000. No, you're not... Look, I know Mr Hunter owns the car, but it was parked in a restricted area. Right. Do you know what a restricted area is? No. <laughs> well, it's an area where there are parking meters, right? Do you know what parking meters are? Yes, I know what a parking meters are. Right. And your Mr Hunter's parking meter was over time. He hasn't got a parking meter. <laughs> well, not who was at. He was at a meeting. Well, his car was at a parking meter and he didn't put enough money in it, right? He puts his money in the car. Well, he should have put it in the parking meter. You put money in the parking... No, he puts it in the tray. No, I'm saying he didn't put enough money in the parking meter. And I just said he puts his money in the car. I'm not talking about the car. I'm talking about the parking meter, all right? What? Because he didn't put enough money in the parking meter. It's not a parking meter, it's a car. I know, it's a fucking car, you stupid woman. For oh. Christ's sake. What did you say? I'm talking about the thing. All right, madam, you can take the car. Off you go. It's yours. Nice. I can take the car? Yes. Ooh. Thank you very much. Right. You didn't have to shout at me like that. Yeah, could you leave, please? Do you do car washes at all? <laughs> Go away. Just it's got quite dusty. Oh, my God. He'd been standing there for a good ten minutes. Oh, I see him now. Just staring straight ahead of him. Me too. And suddenly he swung his leg over the parapet and uh, dropped off. Oh. He hit the ground very hard. Why are you so red? Lay there stunned for a second and then dragged himself to his feet and went back inside. At 30 seconds he reappeared again. Oh. Hurled himself off head first. Landed on his chin. Got up again, staggered about, went inside, came out again onto the balcony, dived off, and did it again and oh. again. Again, he just kept on going. I couldn't hear anything, although the window was open, until 
I suppose the wind must have changed and it was possible to tell that he was sobbing in quite a wretched way. And after about 20 jumps, there must have been 15 people just standing around staring at him in a semicircle. Nobody was raising a finger. It didn't seem appropriate, really. He seemed locked into a very private act. Towards the end, they had to help him inside because he really was quite badly broken up. I don't think he could have made it up the stairs by himself. And after about 40 jumps, he just didn't get up anymore. Apparently somebody asked him what he was doing and he, he said he wanted to jump 40 times off a first floor balcony rather than straight off the top of a tall building in case he decided to change his mind at any point. <laughs> Clearly he didn't. Uh, what the fuck is happening now? Is this a musical number, brothers? <laughs> oh, not this song. Not over, brothers. It's not over. Oh my god! Sorry. Jesus Christ! Mm. 
is much nicer than yours. <laughs> what the f Could you leave me alone now, please? <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> There's no way that's still a will, real website. That's definitely not still a real website. What the fuck was that? <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> I, 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 I... What the fuck was that? I, I can't even put that into words. Jesus Christ. I, I was told it was wild, but like, that's fucking understating it. What the fuck was that? What the, what the hell even? I, I, I just... Wow, that was unlike anything I've ever seen in my entire life. I can't even... It's not often I'm speechless, but I can't put that into words. I, I don't I, I'm not even sure what the hell just happened. Like, that, that was just... I was just one big fucking drug trip. Oh my god. God, I, I can't tell if Chris Morris is a genius and insane person or a combination of the, th of the two. Probably a combination of the two. Because that was the most geniusly insane thing I've ever seen in my whole life. <laughs> I, what the hell was that? <laughs> Alright. Well, I, I don't even know what the hell just happened, but that definitely... Um, lived up to its billing, I'd say. Good God. Well, I'm going to go try to contemplate that. Uh, bye.